Welcome back everyone. For this problem, we're going to use the force of gravity to determine how long it's going to take these two objects to be gravitationally attracted to each other to the point where they collide. So the first step in these type of problems is to find the force of gravity. Force of gravity is GMM over R squared. So for this, I'm going to leave G as G, if my iPad will let me write a G, G. Uh, I have two M's, so I have, there's one M, there's the other M, my two masses, so I have 60 and 80. And then I'm going to divide it by my distance squared. So my distance is my R. And that is 10 meters. So I'm going to put this in the calculator, and I'm going to get 48G. All right. So let me kind of draw a picture of what's going on here. We have our 60 kilogram person. And we have our 80 kilogram person. And they are being gravitationally pulled towards each other. So this person's getting pulled this way, this person's getting pulled this way, and we know that the distance between them is 10 meters. Okay, so what I'm gonna do next is I know that gravity's pulling them with a force of 48 newtons. So I'm gonna use F equals MA on this person, the 60 kilogram person. So the force I just found, 48 G. The mass is the 60 kilograms. And then there's A. So I can solve this. I'm going to divide by 60. And I am going to get, uh, there we go, A equals 0 0.8 back up G okay so I could add in the G at any time I know G is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 um, but I don't really want to use scientific notation yet it's just gonna make things sloppy and messy I'm just gonna leave it as it is and I'm gonna do the same thing for the other person I'm gonna find the other person's acceleration so this would be the same force is pulling both people, so it's still 48 G, that's my force, but this person has a different mass. So I can use that to find their acceleration. I'm gonna divide both sides by 80 again, and I get A equals 0 0.6 G. All right, and it makes sense that uh, the person on the right has a smaller acceleration because they're bigger. So bigger people are gonna get Hold slower. So that makes sense. So we're, we're looking good. My next step is I need to find um, the time and I have a distance. So because I have a distance and I'm trying to find a time, I also have A. Um, I'm going to use this equation. Uh, Delta X equals VIT plus one half AT squared. So Delta X is my distance that the person on the left is traveling. So the person on the left is going to be moving this way, some unknown distance. I don't know how far that is. So I'm just going to call it X. VI is going to be zero. And this is because it starts at rest. And I know that if I come up here, I can see uh, starts at rest. Okay, so then I'm left with one half of A. A is right here, 0.8G, T squared, which equals, 0.4 gt squared. 
and I can't solve this any further. I don't know x, I don't know t. If I don't know two variables, I need two equations to solve this. So I'm going to do the exact same thing for the other person. So I'm going to do the exact same equation for this guy. So I need the distance that the person on the right travels. The person on the right is going to be traveling this way. So what is that distance? Well, let's give this one a number. Let's say this x is 2. If x is 2, then let's say this person 1 is 8. Then person 2 would have to travel 2, right? Because 8 plus 2 has to add up to 10. So how did I get that? I did 10 minus 8, right? I did 10 minus 8 to get my 2. So instead of using 8, though, it, it doesn't have to be 8. It could be any number that the, the 60 kilogram person travels. So instead of that, I'm going to make it 10 minus x. So 10 minus x will get us this number right here. So let's put 10, which is our total distance, minus x. Um, now we need vi. vi is 0 again because it's at rest. And I can show you that right here. at rest. And so I have one half a a is 0.6 g t squared. So then I get 10. Once again, if my iPad will let me write it. Okay, hold on one second. There we go. 10 minus x equals half of 0 0.6 is 0.3 gt squared. All right. And so I can't go any further. So now I'm going to substitute. I'm going to substitute this into here. And what I get is 10 minus 0.4 gt squared equals 0.3 gt squared. I am now going to add 0.4 gt squared to both sides. going to cancel that side. I'm going to get 10 equals 0 0.7 gt squared. Almost there. Uh, I want to solve for g. Sorry, I want to solve for t. I know what g is. I want to solve for t. So I'm going to divide by point, 0 0.7 g. That way the g's cancel, the 0.7's cancel. And I wrote the wrong number down. Let me rewrite that. 0 0.7. And so we get, uh, let me plug it in my calculator. 10 divided by 0.7 g. Uh, G, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. Actually, let me back up. Let me back up. Let me back up. Um, so this will give me, this will give me 10 over 0.7 G equals T squared. And then my last step, I'm going to take the square root. So then we get T equals this thing. And I'm going to plug in G right now. So now I'm going to plug it in all at once. So I'm going to have the square root of 10 divided by 0.7 times 6.67 times E to the negative 11. 
and I get four six two seven nine four seconds that is an answer but it's not the answer because the answer is asking for how many days so I need to convert this to days so my last and final step I'm gonna have four six two seven nine four seconds and I'm gonna put 60 seconds in one minute. And when I do that, the seconds cancel with minutes, but I don't want minutes. So I'm gonna put 60 minutes in one hour and then the minutes cancel and I'm left with hours. And I'm gonna do one more 24 hours in one day and then the hours cancel and I'm left with days. So I'm gonna take my seconds I'm going to divide it by 60 and then 60 and 24 and I'm left with a time of 5.36 days and that is my final answer. All right, I hope you got it. Hope you enjoyed it and I will see you soon.